Yeah. Um, even a Zier, I wouldn't hate here because it gives you a little bit more control over early objectives. Yeah, there's there the Azir. As uh, Rise will come through here for Keen on the top side of the map. Very likely. I guess it's a, there's a weird chance that uh, Keen plays the victor, but I really hope not. Oh. Engage too. Yeah. I, I also do like the fact that there's Crescent Guard and there's Flay to deny the Azir from potential engagements. As here we are, onto the rift for game number one of week three. After this week, ladies and gentlemen, we do have a slight break. It's Sona or uh, Lunar New Year here in Korea, which is a national holiday. Yep. Definitely yep. experienced on it, more Definitely than Dove. Has been one of his uh, better uh, better picks in the past, but that was in a time where Ryze was a little bit different as Doran going for it, looking for that level two opportunity as minions die, but instead just uh, gonna try and chase Keen down. Pretty gonna impressive. Get that level two, as you can see. As yeah, Keen running forward, phase rush, gonna be able to get the dash out there from Doran. As LM, I don't think he's going to stick around. I don't think he feels powerful enough to really fight this one out. There's, there's the flash. Does manage to get that heroic charge into the wall. Flash comes out from LM as well. He charges in on top of Doran. The flash comes through though, and they successfully bait it. Peanut fix, picks up first blood. One, and one Peanut, and five. Is, Peanut is absolutely abusing Hex Flash right now, by the way. As look at this rotation. Who is LM ganking? <laughs> Peanut's like, who says Poppy can't go over walls? Well, they've spotted someone in there, so it's not. Fully invisible as LM's gonna face check. And I think they're still waiting. Yep, there we go. There's the dredge line. Hook is gonna connect, but it's just disengaged. LM takes a lot of damage. Ignite goes down. I don't think so. This mid lane in control by Gen G. They get to slink into this river. And LM's gonna move on over, but Emperor's Divide is set up. Chovy has the ability to get on in there as it's a fair bit of damage, but Elm gonna have to get out immediately. Doran grabs that kill as Keen's trying to take him down, and he will do so. Lahenz gonna have to bail from the area as Ruler now. Red White, do not fight Kwandong Freaks as the ulti comes through from Peanut, and he's trying to defend this Eye of the Herald that was successfully stolen there by Elm. Ruler yeah. was looking for that one last Calibrum Q to try and lock down Teddy as he makes his way in here. Fate gonna eat some honey fruit. Peanut trying to make this a 50-50, but the Drake does go down. There's the flash forward. Heroic Charge comes out, but Hoyt goes golden immediately. Flame Trump is a decent, but it looks like this is the threat going down. Can they find more though? Is that's the double for Trovi. Emperor's Divide delivers Fate, and they wanna be able to take down Ruler. Lahens goes golden. He will be the sacrificial lamb. But Doran grabbing plates towards the top side in last 30 seconds. They have a lot of control of vision on the top side of the map, so can easily make their own big play top. And that's why Hoyt is up there right now. He has to bodyguard. As, oh, Joby oh. sure gonna look for it. Goodbye, Teddy. That's the heroic charge into the line of soldiers. Elm's going to find Chovy though, so they make it a one for one. As let's see whether they manage to get this turret ruler able to do so. And now Elm, nothing he can do. So a turret and a uh, fed jinx in trade for Chovy. You probably take that. Yeah, it would do a lot can actually win against your opponents by buying items like very easily. Small things. Yep. Uh, well, a little bit of a stun here as Doran slinks into the mist. Flame Chompers go down. And that is going to break off this fight potentially, but Lahan's able to walk past it. Peanut lying in wait off to the back of the pit. So, soul point available for Genji. They want to be able to take this one down if they can. Fate moving on in on vision though. So yeah. Some stun onto Ellen to try and deny his movement. These Sand Soldiers Pretty frustrating as there's some Demacian justice being dealt out, but isn't going to find anyone. But now over the wall goes Doran, and look at the needlework damage into the back line. Rule is able to get in there as well, and it is a bloodbath. And yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to get out of that one, Keen. I am sorry. Lahens has so much CC, and it is just over. Peanut still slinking by, looking for Teddy, looking for his opportunities, and knows exactly where he is going. Doran's going to finish off Hoyt. There is absolutely no way out for him. And yeah, I don't know whether Peanut wins this battle. However, he's going to be able to survive, and Chovy says goodbye to Teddy. It's a solo kill in the end. The Drake is taken as well at Soul Point, and Genji should be able to move over to the Baron. Grab this inhibitor as well. And I just, I find it so interesting watching Genji, right? Because. This is a game about Doran carrying. We've seen other games where Chovy was carrying. We've seen games where it was Ruler. We've seen even games where it was Peanut able to get the work done. And now it's like this game is being played largely around Doran being able to get in there and, uh, and make it happen, especially when it came to that last team fight. Yeah. I mean, Guangdong, there's a lot to improve on here. It was a 
decent start to this game. I thought the draft was fantastic, you know, for what this meta is. It doesn't get more of stock standard than this, but one last attempt. Yeah, once more into the breach as Ellen's going to try and get some knockbacks here, but he's immediately just going to die. Chovy picks up that kill, and yeah, these wallets are pretty dang heavy as, yeah, Fate's going to take a lantern, but the... Unfortunately, the Nexus turret doesn't have the option to do so. Hoyt also now going to be in trouble as Doran goes gold. And Chovy's just going to flash to pick up one last kill here at the end. Lens, he may die, but the Nexus is going to follow suit, and that's the most important 50 gold in the game. Gen G, one fight to rule them all, will take game one. I mean, the fact that Doran is able to so heftily outdamage Arise, um, I mean, it just shows you, like, if you see those dark bars, for Kwangdong Freaks in those last few team fights. That's yeah, so that, great. That's, that's late game. Yeah. Um, so. And then he's going to have to fend for himself. And as Jinx, you don't have a very good time while you're doing hey. that. There's the Janna. This is Lahens as well. And Lahens has been a little bit of a Janna fan uh, throughout the time. So hey. that's now. what we used to say, right? Like, this was <laughs> back in the day when Gragas and Janna were played, uh, you know, jungle and support for the the god tier disengage combos. This was like back in 2015. Well, like let's see whether it can happen. I think the, uh, the mission on the other side is a lot easier, right? This is... Chovy doing the best that he can to just launch his way into a backline and destroy Teddy. By the way, yep. um, it would, you'd be like, whoa, that's insane. Um, it's not even fair. I mean, it, it did sort of happen. Uh, there was the range, wasn't it, that Blitzcrank's Q got buffed. Gen G don't really want to fight for this and want to actually get played. So I think that this is the correct response. Now, Peanut is here, however. Yeah. Look at Hoyt's positioning, so good. Yeah, Vision's going to go down as let's see whether Lahens is going to be able to keep his team safe here. He does flash against himself out of the way as now Teddy's in trouble. Hoyt's going to get exhausted, and this looks like it should just be that double kill if Peanut can tank up this turret for his team. But the minions get in the way of a potential Q. The ruler does need to be a little bit careful. In the meantime, Elim is going to be able to grab Shelly. And Genji is back over here getting a free Drake, and they're just one step behind. Now, I say free, Fate is here. Yeah, but Peanut should be able to lock this down. He's very... Oh, no! Ellen's going to be able to come through, steal that one away. Peanut going to safeguard his, himself over the wall. As now there's a Q onto Hoyt. Chovy in position. And it is a Cloud Drake as well. Janna is here. She did give us the weather report, and I am very happy to see it. Chovy dancing on through. Ruler clearing out minions, as that is a lot of damage onto Peanut. But he does have a Blast Cone, and now Hoyt finds himself over the wall. Super Mega Death Rocket, not quite enough damage as Ruler going to cleanse. Hoyt taking a lot, and Peanut will finish the kill. Elim now will get knocked up. The Gen G look like they are happy with just taking the one. As Peanut's still able to get away, believe it or not, <laughs> despite his position there and how greedy the Drake start was. And then Glacial Augment getting a lot of value here for Hoyt, but still, Peanut survives. They don't have Teddy in position to do the damage. They overextend his... In the meantime, King yeah. solo kills Doran there on the top side of the map. Chovy trying to do the same thing in mid lane, but it is not going to work. Exactly how, but this time it doesn't really work, because we're going to check it out from King's point of view. Yeah, watch this one more time. It's just using the fog oh, here. Okay. Uh -oh. I don't know what Doran's status of his ultimate is. Oh, oh he misses oh, no. it. Okay. Oh, that'll do it. Keen gonna get exhausted here as Ruler with some decent guns. Moonlight Vigil comes down. Keen takes a bit. But it's Hoyt that's tanking up most of it. Not and as you can see, 26 CS advantage and Ruler is pretty happy, but the Flash had to be used that have the ability to do so. Kwangdung. And the barrels. They should start the Drake. I mean, you've got this whole choke point controlled. Use it. See, now you've given Chovy enough time to get around the other side here. And suddenly, Fate's on the running one. Whoa, oh, 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 that is so much damage. By the way, uh, Aphelios is a poke champion, and uh, Quantum Freaks have to get the heck out of there. Oh, they had such a good control over the Drake to start it out. They had the choke point control. You know, Gen G are like, come to me, come to me. Yeah, I've got Cask, I've got the Monsoon. Like, I absolutely will smash any team comp that tries to walk through this choke. So you use that power to start a Drake that Fate should have been attached to that one there, I think, earlier on. And then Genji has had one opportunity when Chovy came around and they lost formation. Bam, Moonlight Vigil comes through. It's deathless, but... Oh, that's another party cast there from Doran, who's just going to walk it out. He's like, yeah, no, nah, this is, uh, you know, not, not the greatest as now. It's Keen diving towards that backline. Ruler trying to escape as the exhaust is good, but it's not going to be enough. They trade one for one in the end, but Keen gets what he wanted. With no cleanse as well, there's just really no recourse as... 
feet. Oh my god, Chobi gonna get the ult out of Fate here. Looks like the first ult that we've seen is there's the flash. The ignite is down as well, and Fate's just gonna die to it. Chobi grabs the solo kill in his side lane. Post they don't Keeping him interested. They might have left. Gold the lead. This might help nope. turn it around as, yeah. Okay, how tricky can Trovi be is the question. He does have no flash from that last play. Yeah, well, the Shuriken will connect here as Chovy tries to get out. It's not going to work. Keen actually playing that one beautifully. Only him was required in order to make that one happen. And Keen is the only saving grace here for Kwangdong Freaks right now in this game. And Teddy could be later on. The more things change, the more they stay. Yeah, insane. right. Oh my god. Well, Fate taking a lot of damage there. Doran gonna hit a barrel, but hits Fate the wrong direction. He has flash. <laughs> They're like, okay, well guess who's on the top side of the map then, since you guys all showed down there for one player. Then they have to go so slowly through this because they have no vision. Oh, no, Doran is gonna body slam. There's the flash forward. They wanna go on top of him as Keen getting himself into the back line. Does go golden. Now looking for his Peanut. opportunity, but the backflip is tanked there by Doran. Moonlight Vigil goes down. There's now Element Peanut swap places. And Kwangdong Freaks are on the run, but that's exactly what Gen.G want. They can move back to the Barons. They have to get over here, but remember the disengage options. There are a billion of them for Gen.G, and yes, they have vision, but they just watch the thing go down as Chovy is taking Fate for a walk, and Fate has to go back to the fountain now as well as Kwangdong Freaks is getting run around. It's Keen finds his way into the back line, but Ruler eliminates him. And Genji are just doing exactly what they want this game. Doran with a really nice body slam to lock him down. That's why Akali's so hard to execute. That's you know? not over yet as Hoyt's going to get tagged by the Sonic Wave. Teddy's going to get taken down. And once again, it's another beautiful team fight from Genji. And they just have so much movement speed, man. Yeah, it's, There's it's no getting crazy. away from them. Plus, you know, when they traded on that first exchange, right, they have the, uh, you know, Jana's got that healing item here. So... Yeah, the Moonstone's Moonstone done. Moonstone is done, so like you just heal up so quickly. You do the Baron so fast. Kwangdong Freaks is getting out macroed again here. And it's only an 11 kill game, but Genji looks so dominant. They look just amazing. That is just going to be the kill on the fate before he can even press his ultimate button. Not able to work out. Yes, he laned relatively well, but outside of that, things didn't really work as Ruler finds himself an ult. Keen wants to be able to eliminate him, but the Nexus is also going to go down. The perfect execution not so great this time around. And Gen G, that's a very comfortable 2-0. And man, they looked good while they did it. But yeah, I think we are very likely looking at what's going to happen at the end of the round, Robin, is Gen G are number one and Kwangdong are number 10. Like, that's my prediction right now. Uh, and I think that the game score and how one side of the series reflects that. But Kwangdong, I hope they can I hope they can bounce back because this is a team of talented individual players that one day will become a unit. I hope. Thank you very much guys. This is season with the POG interview joined by the Gen G players, Doran and Chovy. And you guys are the first team to pick up the fifth victory of the split. How do you feel, Doran? I'm happy that we are able to extend our winning streak, but I just want to go back home and be alone. You know, interview is so hard for me. Chovy, Genji has the sole possession of the first place and have a very long win streak. How do you feel? I'm happy about this winning streak and also I will do my best in order to stay on top of DLCK. Doran, sorry, but we do have to continue this interview. So in the previous POG interview, you said, like, I don't think I deserve the POG. I'm so flustered that I want the POG. So what about today? Do you think you deserve the POG? I mean, there was one team fight where I was able to get some cool oats, but I was suffering starting from the laning phase. So I was a little bit surprised that I got the POG, but it's OK. I did all right. And that team fight was indeed very significant for Gen G. Yeah, because last week my performance on Gwen was so bad, so I practiced a lot. So I think it got a little bit better. Game number one, Kwangdong actually locked in their last pick as Rise for Keen. Did you see that coming? No, so I was a little bit flustered. And also, looking at the uh, matchup, the laning phase wouldn't have been that easy for you, right? Especially if you were playing against Keen. I think it just went as I expected, you know. Keen is a very talented player, but I knew that this is a very... Um, I'm having the weak side matchup, so it's going to be really tough. 
Toby, you want POG on the blank for game number two. We had early lock in for Chindamir Akali from Gwangdong Freaks. So did you see that kind of rotation coming? With those two picks locked in, you know, I thought, you know, they're going to go with the better pick for the mid lane. And because I locked in LeBlanc, I actually didn't see that coming, you know, because I locked in LeBlanc, there's no way they're actually playing Chindamir into LeBlanc. So I was a little bit surprised. And Chovi, everyone just knows so well about your laning phase, how strong it is. So any tips about the laning phase? I think I did really bad against Trindamir this time around because I couldn't base, so I have no tips to share with you guys today. Game 2, you guys played Joanna. However, I heard players saying at the voice comment, like, you never play Joanna when we ask you to play it, but now that you're playing it, it's so good. So could you break down what happened in Gen G? I mean, that's what Lee Hens did, so I have no details, but I hope he does he does better and get POG and gives us the win, you know? What about you, Doran? I have no idea either. I hope Lee Hens can win POG in the future and explain to us. So what do you think of Jana right now? Do you think that's very viable in the current meta? As a LeBlanc player, you know, <laughs> I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but Shauna, I've never run into her, to be honest. We had no contact at all in this game. What about you, Doran? What do you think of Shauna? It's, it's okay. And we have a lot of question about the Lee Sin pick from Gen G. You guys actually skipped Sin Zhao and locked in Lee Sin, a champion with a very low win rate currently. Peanut is really good at Lee Sin. And also looking at our comp and the opponent's comp, you know, Lee Sin is a really good counter into Akali. So, in general, listen was the better pick. And with this 12.2 patch, we no longer have the Chemtech Drake. So, what do you think about that? Is that a good news for you? I mean, this thing never happened before, you know, getting rid of a Drake. So, but I think he deserves this re removal. You know, he doesn't deserve to be on the Rift, to be honest. And that was a really good uh, Drake for a uh, Bruiser ch Champs, right? I mean, the buff is is not really good um, against... I mean, it's really bad as a tank player. So I'm so glad that that Drake and the buff is removed. I guess Riot is doing something great for the pro players. And Doran, now that we've been having back-to-back -back interviews, how are you feeling? Are you feeling a lot more comfortable on stage? Pretty, pretty, pretty much comfortable, you know? A lot better. Toby, what do you think of Doran's interview skills? It's so hard to hold my laughter. And Toran, he'll be playing against KT Roaster, your former team, and Rascal is doing a fantastic job at the moment as well. What's your mindset heading into that matchup? It's going to be so fun, you know? I can't wait. Chovi, he'll be playing against KT Roaster as well. Any message over to their players? Um, I'm not good. I, I'm not that close with them, so I don't want to do any banters. I'll just do my best in order to help Toran beat his former team. Tor uh, Chovy being a little bit more polite to some players who doesn't really um, have a lot of connection. So lastly, Toran, any message over to the fans? I'm happy that we won, and I hope you guys are feeling happy as well. And thank you for all the support, and I will do my best in the upcoming match. What about you, Chovy? Thank you for all the love and support, and we will try our best to continue to perform well. And that's going to be it from Chovy, Dorian, and I'm going to pass it back to the analyst desk. Thank you.